I'm sure you guys have heard um, some of the some discussions we've been having. Um, we are analyzing the electric schedule. Um, we have, this is just the beginning. We're going to be doing this for all of our 11 lines. But we really want to do two things. We want to address underutilized equipment. And we also want to look at opportunities and better build ridership. Um, you may have heard there's been a decline in ridership on the electric line in recent years. And we're really trying to do something to save that on. Uh, at the same time, we also want to make sure that our uh, service really meets ridership demand. So if you look at the uh, current Metro Electric schedule, it's a Monday through Saturday schedule. And really we're not seeing that demand on weekends as you would on the weekday. So we're trying to make that a little bit more normal, kind of like other lines, and make it a Monday through Friday schedule and then more of a weekend schedule. So that's part of simplifying the schedule. Uh, another goal is to make the headways, we call it, that's what we call frequency, um, consistent midday. So right now, sometimes you'll see trains back to back to back, a large gap, trains back to back to back, a large gap, and we're trying to make that a consistent uh, headway or frequency throughout the midday. So what exactly are, are we proposing? So we are proposing to eliminate the branch shuttle trains in the morning and the late, late evening. So what is a branch shuttle train? Those are the trains that either go between 93rd Street and 59th Street or 63rd Street, or Blue Island, like here, and Kensington. So we find that those trains have extremely low ridership, actually, sometimes fewer than five people, sometimes actually have counts of zero people on them. Um, so it's literally an empty train. Uh, so we are making one adjustment, however, for uh, the early morning. We're combining two of those shuttle trains into one full one-seat ride downtown. So we've heard some concerns. Um, it gets in currently in the proposed schedule at 557. Uh, you know, a lot of people have 6 o'clock starts. We are looking at making that adjustment. Again, that's why we're here for specific feedback like that. Um, but again, so two of those shuttle trains that you know, right now require transfer, we're proposing to make that one seat ride all the way downtown. That's early morning. On the evening trains, we are proposing to keep one shuttle train at the very end of the night, about 8, 8 11. Um, that's because after that, we do see that large drop off of ridership. We're keeping that one, one loop train, one shuttle train, I should say, um, in there as a safety net and also uh, to return the equipment back. So there is one loop train, one shuttle train at the end at 8 11 um, in the current proposed schedule. So um, this, this is an example of what I was talking about earlier. I know it's, there's no great way of showing schedule changes on a presentation. Um, the numbers are by design, uh, you know, about south, there's by design small. But you can see here, right, you have a 200 and a 202 that serve the Blue Island branch. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier. We are proposing to make that, uh, that 202 is a one seat ride all the way downtown. So currently, they require transfer to Kensington. Um, the proposed schedule, it'll take you all the way downtown to 202. And again, as a 202 a.m.? At AM. It's, uh, well, it's 202 is the train number. Um, the other part at 5 a.m. in this proposal. So it's early morning. Um, that is one. still make stops. Yeah, it'll make all the stops, yeah. So right now, it doesn't make all the stops go downtown. If you want to go downtown early morning, you'd have to transfer at Kensington. And that's, the, that's kind of the point. We're trying to combine those two trains and make a one-seat ride, because we find that those branch shuttle trains aren't very popular because they are, you know, they require transfer and that's a two-seat ride, and that just tends to drive down ridership. So I uh, also want to make the point that this isn't just looking at you know, the South Chicago branch or the Blue Island branch. This is looking at the electric district, electric line in totality. So we have a study, we have studied the entire line. So there are three portions of the electric line where we are now, the Blue Island line, what we call the main line, which goes between University Park and Millennium Station, and then also the South Chicago branch. So this, you know, this slide may not affect folks here, but just kind of to show you that we are looking at the line and trying to make um, changes in the entire line um, in the morning. Uh, there is a large gap for downline riders, and we're proposing to address that by moving equipment earlier, again with the goal of being making our equipment just being used more efficiently. And whenever we have made this change, um, we are trying to make sure that riders who are affected by that change still have options. So this, there, there are some stop adjustments um, in the early morning rush, and that is because we're making changes to um, accommodate those riders who, you know, do we move a train up, or do you to rely on that train, other trains will make up the slack. Um, and as like I mentioned too, with the uh, combining these two early morning loop trains, we are looking at other aspects of the line. Uh, so the main line, the South Suburban line, uh, we are looking at combining two lighter used trains in the morning peak. So two trains that have a little bit less ridership, and one one set of equipment can actually accommodate two different trains. So we'll, um, we're proposing to make that one set of equipment that picks up all those riders in the morning. And this is again, this is down line. This is in the Flossmoor Harvey area. Uh, we're proposing to do that in the morning, 
and we're also proposing to do that in the evening. So again, we're just combining trains. We see efficiencies, but we have trains that can accommodate, um, you know, one train car can accommodate about 140 people. So if there's a train car that, you know, if there's a train set that, or a train, I should say, that only has um, 200 people on it and has four cars, well, that's not the best use of equipment. We can actually accommodate more riders. That's what we're looking to make some of these combinations. So um, another goal, and what I mentioned earlier, was making the um, headways more consistent, the midday service more consistent. If you look at the electric line map, there are three branches. And right now, like I mentioned, there's kind of trains back to back, a large gap, trains back to back, a large gap. So whenever we talk about some of this, um, this high park enhanced service, part of that is just basically making the service more consistent. So instead of having uh, you know, two trains back to back, if you space trains evenly, if you have hourly service on the three branches and you space them evenly, then you make 20 minute service to Hyde Park because all the trains have to traverse Hyde Park. So that's some of the, uh, the logic behind this. Uh, it's not just you know, throwing service where it's maybe not needed, but some of it just makes sense that you know, we're doing these things consistently and also giving the riders expectations of when they can expect their trains. Um, I will say midday, Blue Island currently is service every two hours, and that's the same uh, frequency in this proposed schedule. So midday, weekday service does not really change in terms of the number of trains Blue Island sees. So um, we are looking at, like I mentioned, some of these trains that don't have a lot of ridership. So there's eight shuttle trains on the South Chicago branch, which is you know, closer to the lake um, east, and eight, uh, eight, found, um, eight shuttle trains, I should say, on the Blue Island branch. So we are looking at making those reductions. Um, that is part of the, again, the greater goal of making sure that our equipment is being well utilized and that we're actually servicing uh, where folks are. So this, this slide is basically meant, uh, and we actually, you know, we have handouts of these, and again, it's hard to show schedule changes because there's the sheer number of stops and, and times involved. But the purpose of the slide is really to look at how was the schedule actually changing for me. So the top row is um, what the current schedule, schedule as it stands today is. The row right below it is how it'll change. So this, that means that a 439 departure currently like I mentioned, we're proposing uh, combining that with a 530 for a five o'clock departure. We might move that up a little bit earlier to make that six o'clock start feasible. But this is basically how the schedule changed for inbound for Blue Island Branch. So this is some of the changes. You can see a lot of the trains actually depart Blue Island at the exact same time. Sometimes they're changed by about an hour. But really that, that this kind of encapsulates the changes. Uh, the same for outbound as well. So this is what I was mentioning um, earlier, the last train uh, we're looking at is 811. Um, that's the party from Kensington, so that one shuttle train is still in effect. Um, Can you go back? Sure. Yes, yeah, so this is these are trains departing Blue Island. So that so there's a 610 train currently. We're proposing to depart at 615. Okay, and then 640. Correct. Yes, yeah, so there's 640 currently, and a 640 we're proposing as well. And that's going to stay. Yeah. But you want us to pick up more stops. Yeah, and that is. Bus. Well, not the best train, but yeah, they uh, they are proposing to um, reconfigure some of the stops. They will have stops at it. And if there are questions or comments like that, um, please write them down. We are checking these these comments absolutely. I mean, I, I, seriously, I can write a bus. I mean, they're going to stop every stop too. I don't want to write a bus. That's why I take that train. And that's it. that's why we're here. You know, that's but these are the comments we're looking for. So I encourage you to write them down. There's a lot of people on those trains. I don't understand why you wanted to. Yeah, no, this is, again, this is a proposal. This is uh, looking at the schedule in its entirety. So if you have comments like that, anyone has comments like that, I encourage you to write them down, because we will, we are, we are reading and taking them seriously. Well, we're declining the proposal. Okay. <laughs> do us a favor yeah. though. Don't yeah. don't write it like that because yeah. we won't be able to really get the information about that and it won't mean anything. So if it, it affects you some way, write that down. Do you want me to come to the meeting? I could explain it. You know, you guys are going to do a board what, meeting. What, what you need to do is, is write it down so we look at it and we can take everybody's comments and, and see where it's at. Okay. I think, uh, too, just in general, I know um, but the city questions will be in case I do answer it earlier. But yeah, we're, we're here to answer questions. We're here. It's a proposal. We're here to uh, hear you guys. And that's exactly what we're here for. I just want to make sure it's just not set in stone already that we do no, have a voice. So, yeah, that's all right. So, um, as kind of Again, using the equipment efficiently, that's part of the, the goal of this, this study, is um, our current Saturday service 
Uh, we do have a Monday through Saturday schedule currently in the electric district, and we're seeing that those passenger loads aren't necessarily seen on Saturdays. Just like an expressway, you can see the same traffic on Saturday as you would on Monday through Friday during rush hour. So there are, you know, there are difference in travel patterns and employment patterns you see on a Saturday compared to a weekday. So um, current Saturday service is more like a kind of weekday schedule, and currently um, we actually operate more on the electric than any other line. Um, and we're proposing to stay that, that way for the electric line, but um, this is part of the, the, the study, is looking at where riders are. And right now, um, on for the Blue Island Branch stations, they accommodate about uh, six people per train. So that's part of the reason um, you know, we're trying to be upfront with that. We are proposing to eliminate Saturday service on the Blue Island Branch, on the electric district. Um, and that, that is just based on our ridership data. So um, that, that's part of it. I will say, though, because we're in Blue Island, that um, there in about two years ago, we had increased the Rock Island service from 20 trains to 32 trains. And actually, the Rock Island service um, is express. There's six express in, six express out. And uh, it's a, basically a faster trip. So that's an alternative um, that Blue Island residents actually have on Saturdays. But then I would also have to take bus, too, to get to where I was going. Okay. I don't want to do that. No, again, this takes me right into sure, my sure. office. And that, that, that's the comments we were looking for. So but this, it, um, it's just worth noting that uh, there is an alternative rail line basically across the street from the station. It actually is across the street from the station. So that, um, with that currently, there is no Sunday service on Blue Island. That um, that will not change with this proposal. But uh, with that, we'll take any, any questions or comments. So real quick, um, we want to hear from you guys, but let's keep it. We'll answer your questions as you ask, and we'll go through the crowd as such. We just want to keep it formal. I understand that there are some frustrations here, but we want to be here to inform you, but also hear your hear your comments. Thank and you. if I could add one one thing, I'm sorry. Then we're, we're there. This is what we're looking at doing right now because of the ridership and things like that. As things come back and things grow and things you know things develop. We can bring it back. We're not moving away. We're not taking station away. We're not pulling up track. You know, that's the whole idea of this: is to, to match service delivery with what with what the ridership actually is and the need. So as things develop and things get more robust and, and that, we we'd like to come out here and say we're adding a bunch of trains. We're doing this. We're doing that. But we've also got a problem just like everybody. I understand everybody what you're saying, but my whole thing is. I don't understand why you would take this train away when there is enough ridership on it. I understand that, you know, let's try this, we'll bring it back and it doesn't work. But don't take it away to begin with, because it already works. That's what I'm saying. It really does work. There's a lot of people on our trains, on our train in the morning. So I, I don't understand why you take it away and then turn it into a bunch more staffs. Could I add something before I may interrupt? Again, if people who don't know who I am, I'm Mayor Vargas and we got the staff here. Here's my situation as the mayor of the city of Blue Island. We consider Blue Island as a transportation hub. And that's something we've, that we've tried to push, not only now, but in the past. I'm 55 years of age, and I've always known the electric line, or the IC line, or the metro electric line as being there, as well as the Rock Island line. And I'll admit, I've used more of the Rock Island line than I have the electric. But we've been used to having both lines there, having that option. And I'm against. Any cost. Thank you. Any cost. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll Here's the thing. Let me, if I can add this, we've been here to promote the Southland. All right. We got the Calsac Trail coming through Guadalupe, but instead of just thinking going that way, let's think about people coming from downtown coming this way to enjoy not only Blue Island but the surrounding suburbs. Mm -hmm. What we have to offer. Mm -hmm. All right. I've heard about the gentleman. They know I. I sent them a letter. I'll, Personally, to give you guys another letter, <laughs> so you can address it to your boards of how we, our position as a city, of where we stand, that we're supporting the commuters, the riders, who use it every day to go to work, for play or whatever. Okay. The main thing is I think that since the electric line, there's been a fault not only through Metro, the RTA, that you haven't promoted that line as much as you promoted the Rock Island line, because it's so hidden, people could forget about it. Even we, now I include myself, who have lived all my life in Blue Island, that line is vital to this town, okay? We consider ourselves unofficially a transportation hub, 
We've been in the spotlight for possibly being express rail in the future. And again, let's think about the CalSAC trail and everything else that this, not only Blue Island has to offer, but all the south suburb has to offer. When the presidential library is finally built, you're gonna have people, and hopefully, if this goes through, ridership will go up to go and go to that location. Mm -hmm. But let's think about it going both ways. People from Chicago coming south, and us going that way. Whether I see the elimination completely down to zero, how about let's gradually take it down, cut it in half, or do something, listen to the people, to the riders, and go from there, instead of just completely taking it out. <coughs> That's where I am. I might go to Blue Island. I was going to say that I understand the late night ride the ship that you're going to cut that, or if you cut that, you know, the late hours. I understand the weekends also, Saturday and Sunday, you know, because things have changed and people don't come out as much as they used to. You know, I understand that. But the rush hour train. With the, with the ridership that is up. Remember the rush hour trains. See if you can go around that or lay another track to go over there. You guys know how to do that. But that track over there is going to go over there so that the uh, rush hour trains can continue to go. It's not that many, so other than that, I understand some of the cuts in the late night. I understand that. I, I, I fully. Those, those are the kind of comments we do need, oh, uh, especially please send those in. And just saying, this doesn't work for me, well, that, that's not what we can analyze. We need specifics. We, I know you're trained. I, I definitely know you're trained. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you. Uh, we will definitely be looking at your train. And we'll be looking at why we pushed the, the stops over there, and we're looking at if maybe that's not, not the best alternative for, for those stop patterns. But these are the comments that we need. That's why we're out here. We do not have a definitive date of when this is going in because we are already looking at what we can do. We are trying to work with you guys. We're trying to hear from, from your comments. But is it possible that you can lay another track to go over that way with it? <laughs> 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 that's, not very, that's not as likely because it's very, very expensive to lay another track in the <coughs> We've got the infrastructure that we have. We've got to maintain the infrastructure we have. We're trying to adjust trains that make sense and things, listen to everybody, get the comments of where we can tweak this and, and make it better, we'll try to do that to the best of our ability. That's why it's so important for the comments to come back. Not that I just don't like it, if you cut anything you guys are not thinking or whatever, that does nothing for us. If you've got a certain concern, put those down. So when we look at everybody's concerns, we can try to address them the best way we can. And the gentleman in the, in the green, you've been taking right. your hand up several Thanks. different times, you've got five okay. minutes. Uh, my name is Bill Farrell, I'm an alderman here at Fourth Ward. Um, so my concern is that, I guess my question maybe is, why is ridership on this line so low? Yeah. And the answer, I'm in marketing also, and it's, I think you've got a marketing problem here, and the answer seems pretty obvious. The Rock Island Service, which serves basically White Sox Park as a big destination and the South Loop, doing quite well. Your service is really good. Our Metro Electric branch that goes to Pullman, the Museum of Science and History, Hyde Park, Soldier Field, the, Muse the Adler Planetarium, the Aquarium, uh, the, uh, the uh, Field Museum, and Michigan Avenue is not doing well. Why? The service, pardon me, sucks. You have very slow trains, those evening trains where you have to change in Kenton, it's just atrocious. I talk to people, nobody's gonna do that. Um, the, now the weekend service, uh, again, you know, you're making a cutback. On the Rock Island, I can board a train here on schedule. I can be down in 20 minutes. In fact, I'm downtown in 17 minutes on the Rock Island. On the IC Electric, it can be over an hour. It's really obvious. The service on the electric, Metro Electric is just incredibly inferior. And it's, I agree with most of what the mayor said, but one thing I don't agree with is it's not about promotion. It's about service. People aren't riding that train because the service is atrocious. And it has been for decades. And now the solution is to cut service? I don't understand that. Uh, I don't know what kind of marketing work you've done to look at this or to try to understand. It seems really obvious what's, what the problem is. The solution is not cutting back. The solution is improving the service. I know that costs money. 
but we are being asked to give up service so that Hyde Park can have better service. And I'm delighted for the people at Hyde Park. It's great. And the service there is great. And they use it. Of course, service is good. We don't use this here because the service is bad. And I think you need to stop this whole thing, step back, and look at what can we do to work you know, cooperatively to improve the service and increase the service. Because it's not only important to the Southlands and to Blue Island, it's important to Metro. What you're doing is going to result in even lower ridership on the electric line, and you're going to cut back even more. And you say you're not going to walk away from it, but I would suspect if I was in your position at some point, I would, because I do exactly what you're doing right now, looking at the ridership. You know, who wants to run empty trains? It makes no sense. I get that. But why are they empty? I think the reason is obvious. I don't think Metro has addressed it, and I think you really need to. Thank you. I want to mention, too, I am uh, one of the frequent riders on the 439 and the 532. Now, I've seen quite a few people on the 439 from Blue Island going to Kensington and switching over to uh, the University Park train. I don't think that should be cut out, or the 532. I do see quite a few people on the trains going out of Blue Island, switching over to uh, Kensington. And this, this is the, the, those are the trains we are proposing to make a one-seat ride. Um, basically, to those two trains, the one train that goes all the way downtown, not require transfer to Kensington, because um, because it does drive down ridership. Now, saying that uh, currently gets downtown, as we're saying, the uh, about 557, the 439, you're saying that you know the folks who have the first shift, we are looking at accommodating that, um, perhaps moving that train even earlier, to closer to 439. Uh, but it is more comfortable if you have a one-seat ride, and that's why, that's why we're making that proposal. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a good comment, again, please write that down and be specific on those two, so we can, we can analyze that. You're saying the five o'clock would go straight down? Yeah, it wouldn't require transfer in this proposal, correct. So it would be to make um, all the way to money decision. So that you folks are not faceless corporate, could you identify yourselves? Sure. Um, I'm, go ahead. I'm Don Orsino, Executive Director, CEO of Metro. Jeff Brantz, Manager of Service Design. Marty Ryan, Metro's Chief Transportation Officer. Dan Miodowski, the Supervisor of Schedules and Services of Metro. Uh, Trey Blaze, uh, service planner. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think there's a couple of them here that, you know. Well, we have to appreciate that you folks have come down. You're the people that make the decisions. So we, 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 really appreciate, we don't take this lightly. We, we yeah. appreciate it. We, we've looked at it. We've tried to analyze it. We've tried to look at funding, we try to look at service, we try to look at where is the service, where is the ridership, where is it growing, where is it not growing, and make those adjustments. We also didn't do that in a vacuum. We worked pretty collaboratively amongst our agency, and now we're reaching out into the communities that this affects, and try to get some thoughts and things. Now, we're not going to be able to do everything that everybody asks, because mm -hmm. this isn't a personal service. It's still a transportation. Mm -hmm. However, if there's things that make sense, that we can do, we want to do it. I mean, we want to listen to our customers and give our customers what they're looking for. That's what we'd like to do. Why not you guys, you know, pick a time and ride some of these trains and see what the ridership is like? I mean, that's a good idea. If you're getting out there with the people that actually take the trains, see what's going on, you know. You'll see then where you need to cut. Well, I can, I can answer that for you. That's a good suggestion, but we do do that. Not only do we do that, we do a formal count every few years that have people at every station, every platform counting. Every but I mean person. you guys. No, we do else. that. We do that. Uh, uh, Dan, Dan was there. Yeah, we, we, we do that. Counters, and then yeah. not only that, because you're really worried about, you know, are we really understanding the true ridership on these trains? Mm -hmm. But every train is counted every day by the conductor, and that gets turned in. So every day we know how many people were on that train. So we we do have those numbers, and that's how we based a lot of right. what we're that's doing today on it. It wasn't why we just didn't want to come to Blue Island and want to do this or do something in South Chicago or somewhere else. You analyze the numbers. That's what you do when you're in business. You you operate on data, and you look at the data, and you say, you know, this doesn't doesn't work right now. Things have changed. We're running schedules that are 30 years old. 
And now we're trying to look at how do you match this? So what we did, just to give everybody the idea of how we did it, we took a, like it was a blank piece of paper. Knowing the ridership that we have and the times <coughs> we're going and things like that, try to build a system now with the infrastructure that you have. We couldn't put new tracks in and different things like that, but with the infrastructure that you have, what makes the most sense to be able to take your resources and to put them in places where they're going to be utilized to the highest value? That's what we've done. On top of that, we said we need to go out and talk with the communities. We need to come out to Blue Island. We need to come out to, last night we were in Flossmoor. Tomorrow we'll be at the University of Chicago. Uh, Monday we were at, at the Cultural Center at, at 71st Street, you know, on the South Chicago Bridge. So we wanted to listen, and quite honestly, not everybody's happy about things. You know that, because anytime you change things, people aren't happy. What we ask is, write down, let us know what, how it is affecting your ridership, your life, and things like that. And let us know, and we'll look at it. And where we can tweak things up that make sense that we can do, we're going to try to do it. We want our customers to be happy. That's what we want to do. But we also want to provide the right transportation and the right service in areas that we can provide. So, Mr. Osino, we really appreciate you being here. And I do understand the problem you're facing, and I get why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and, and I think you understand why we're frustrated because sure. you know we're losing a, a good service here. And I think more you know to the point. I know what's going to happen is going to happen, so we, we we accept that. But I would hope that going forward we could look towards you know how can we realize the potential of this line, which is really something because I mean really from a marketing perspective, if you look at two identical lines and one serves a million people and one serves half a million people. If you had identical service down both lines, you ought to have double serve, double the ridership on the one that serves a million. And that's kind of the situation we've got right here. But the service down the electric branch just, it isn't adequate. It's just not something that's attractive to people, and that is the problem, in my opinion. And I'd love to see a way down the future where, you know, we can work towards finding the funding, finding the resources, you know, to make that service viable again, because it's not viable right now. Well, we've heard your, your comment. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Me? Like the current lot of uh, question I have, that, and I'm not a rail person per se, but the only central, as I know it, and the metro, when were they, when were they combined to metro? When did the LMI Central and metro, when did metro purchase, purchase it? Yeah, I believe it was May 1st, 1987. 1987. Yeah. Since 19 I happen to be there as well. <laughs> <laughs> My second question is, since 1987, the only thing that I've seen, and it's an improvement to that Illinois Central, was about 13 years ago or so, when you remodeled the station a little bit, because of need, of safety reasons. Otherwise, all along, from what I've seen, from 119th down, there's two or three stops, Never been addressed. Never money has been spent to improve the services, as yeah. Mr. Fellowhorn said, to improve and, and have uh, more uh, people be accommodated <coughs> to be a few more comfortable to come here to be serviced. People sometimes drive different to different locations, or or they actually drive rather than stopping to take the ridership. So again, and, and these other metro stations that I sometimes I read in the Illinois Municipal uh, Magazine, that they, Tilney Park has got this new metro line of arts. There's such and such a metro station, millions of dollars spent. Is that all yours, or is that a combination with the, with the community? Well, let me, let me just answer it this way, because you started out talking about something. I want to correct some of the comments that you made. You said there's been no money spent in, it was about 13 years ago, and I assume you're talking about the rehabilitation of Vermont Street itself, correct? Is that what you're talking about? Which is true. But also, the last couple of years, we've spent an enormous amount of money, not money that's coming from the state or anywhere else, money that Metro has, that we've invested. State Street we did, 127th Street. If you look at 127th Street today and where it was five years ago, it's a complete different station. We've invested a lot. We've invested a lot in the electric district. Let me, let me just share one other tidbit of information. When you talk about investment on the electric district, the electric district has the most trains. It has the newest cars, $585 million worth of cars we just got. We finished that order, I believe, it was a little over a year ago. The newest cars of any line. 
the best on-time performance. So to say that we haven't invested in it really isn't an accurate statement. Now, can we do everything? No, we, we can't do everything. Now let's go to, you said Tinley Park. You're equating Tinley Park with some of the stations here. When we have money to do a station, and the station comes up that we've got X amount of money, and then the community, the village, puts in the other amount of money. So if, let's say there was a $4 million investment, and Blue Island wanted to put a $20 million station in there, we have $4 million, you have $16 million, you can put whatever you'd like to do. That's, that's how that works. There's no magic number, but that's, that's basically how it works. So it's, it's the communities putting in, it's Metro putting in a certain amount. So, the, but the bottom line is that's really what it is. So when you say we haven't invested, I disagree with that. I know sometimes people look at it that we haven't invested because there's still some stations out there that need to be redone. Yes. But we've got 241 stations on our system and it's very hard for us with the, with the budgets that we have and, and we're no different than the community of Rhode Island, the village of Rhode Island, the town of Rhode Island. We're, we're no different. Um, you know, we've got budget shortfalls, we've got a lot of things we're trying to do, we're trying to keep the trains we've got on right now running, we're trying to put money into stations. I was on the phone, and I'm not going to mention names, with a state rep on the way down here, on the way to Blue Island, saying, hey, we got to get something going here. This this is, we're, we're being told now that, you know, time, we're in a crunch time. If something doesn't happen by June 30th, they've, you know, there's a lot of things not going to happen, and we've got to get that going. So. It's not that we've got money and aren't, aren't spending it. We've spent an enormous amount of money on the electric district trying to keep stations and upgrade them to the best of our ability, doing stop gaps on some of the things. Look what we did at 111th Street, you know, the, the Pullman district. We did that on our, on our own resources. We made that, that wasn't a station you'd really want to go to. We made that kind of like an historical station, it looks like a Pullman car. So we are doing some, some things out there for the good. So I appreciate what you're saying, but I also want it, I don't want it not noticed of the good things that we are trying to do throughout the communities. Thank you. So the gentleman here has something. Hi, I've been taking Metro for 17 years. And for the most part, I've been enjoying my service. But my thing is, I'm one of the, I'm one of the minority people here. I do take Saturday service. And to completely cut Saturday service, you know what, because I think it's a museum campus. The Rock Island does not go to museum campus. They have to take another train or a bus or something, which costs more money. Um, so I'm one of the few people, a few amount of people that couldn't make it because the meeting right now is at a time they were working. So I got to leave it early. So I'm speaking of them as well. So don't completely cut it. I can see maybe a couple of trains in the middle, have an early morning and a late afternoon, and a couple of trains in the middle, you can cut a little of those. But don't completely cut service. You can't, as the mayor said, you can't enjoy the city weekends. That's when things happen. Concerts, you know, a lot of things going on downtown, um, street fairs. You can't enjoy the you can't enjoy the line, you can't enjoy the city if you cut service completely. Another thing is you could do is, I know it might not be an option, but instead of going all the way downtown, you can have some of the trains like they do in the at night times run from Blue Island to Kensington where you can transfer over. That way you don't have to spend all the money to go all the way downtown. You can just go halfway to Kensington and somehow figure it out where you can transfer to another train. Um, and that way you don't have to go all the way downtown to um, pay. But a lot of people, people that do ride it on the weekends, which aren't, which aren't that many, but they are dedicated. They do ride it every weekend to get to work, to get to the museum campus, to get to have fun, you know, go see concerts, because a lot of things have to do on the weekends. And some of them, a lot of the people at Blue Island I know that uh, take trains with walk. They don't have, they don't have the elderly, the, um, they have kids, they don't, they don't drive. And they do walk, and a lot of the people I talk to um, won't be able to get downtown to enjoy any of the fun in Blue Island or in the, in, over here. Appreciate the comment, and that's what you need to, on your comment. I have, I have been emailing you guys. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Every day I emailed you guys. No, I, I appreciate it. We, we do appreciate everybody's comments. We really do. We really want to understand and, and see what everyone's. There are some people that do enjoy the weekends. Okay. I Thank wanted you. to say, too, there's times I uh, come from downtown after 9 o'clock. What are we supposed to do then if there's no trains coming back? We brought alternate service pieces over there for the CTA for those kind of things. The issue is that 9 o'clock trains have zero one. The occasional rider that rides it once a year 
That's not sustainable. Running empty trains is just not sustainable. The one thing, I, one thing I also want to point out that Blue Island has been very blessed, really, when you think about the Rock Island service and the electric service. There's a lot of places that have one service, and they don't have the type of service you'd like to have. So we're pretty fortunate in Blue Island to, to have that type of service. And like the mayor said, you know, we need to promote it. We need to write it. We need to do things. We, and as things develop and things come back, we want to come back out here just in forums like this, saying, hey, we're adding this. We're doing this. We're doing that. So it's not that we're moving away. We're not moving away. It's We're going to be here. And we're going to grow as communities grow and, and have to make adjustments when they, when they don't. So the real goal for all of us is, is to increase ridership. Increase ridership, then we're all working collaboratively to make things happen. And also work with our legislature to make sure they're funding the transportation system like they should be funding the transportation system to provide the service. Man in the back. Um, how are you going to know if you cut the trains on the weekend completely on Saturday? How are you going to know if your ridership is going to go up or not because you don't have any trains running? Well, what so you how would, are you going to know to bring it back? Well, what you would do is you look at the community development. Like right now, I'll give a perfect example. If you go, a lot of the people who take the train downtown, you go through Hyde Park, you see cranes, you see buildings, you see a lot of things happening, you see development, right? You you go to different places, no matter where it's at, whether it's Hyde Park or it's, it's up north someplace. As the communities grow, developments pick up, there's more need for trains and transportation. You know that. It's not that you, if you don't, of course, if you don't have a train, you can't see the ridership increase on the train. Exactly. But that's not how you judge whether you need a train or not. You judge whether you need a train or not is with existing trains that you have, and then also the development and the community, how things are going. That's what you look at. That's what you're planning, people. We've got people from our planning department back here, but that's what we do. We look at that, we, we analyze it, we forecast it. Because I got to be honest with you, as you're planning things, if we needed to buy new rail cars, if there is money someday, if we needed to buy new rail cars, you just don't go down to the Ford dealer and buy a new rail car. It takes several years to get on, on a waiting list and to get the contracts going, to get the production going. So it's, a, it, it's one of those things where you're looking at it, if you're looking at an area that all of a sudden you realize it's going to be something big. I'll give an example. U.S. Works, Steelworks out there in South Chicago, right? That was sold last year or earlier this year. And they're planning a, just a monster development. As that development goes through and the buildings start going up and people are moving there and rider, then you would add trains. Of course you would do that. But the beauty of the electric district, we can, we can move things pretty quickly. It's not like we've got a, I would like to say we'd be in a position where we'd have to find new cars, but we're in a position where we can quickly add trains if the if the, the need was there. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'm going to give you a question. Just a few, the gentleman said that uh, you know money was the best there because Poland was just designated, right? Uh, yeah. Right. Well, so it, I mean, it wasn't just like spending money to be nice. It was, you know, but. And I talked to a few people here, and I, I'm a newbie at this, and I just did like some few little Google searches and, you know, found out about that the board was appointed, about how they're spending money, what the taxpayers pick up, and, um, but I have a new question just based on uh, the little literature that they were nice enough to hand me. It's kind of the question that Bill, my alderman, and my mayor, if it, that Ridership has been going down. Has there been any like uh, research in why it's been going down? And the question that I have it it says that ridership has been going down, but you put the newest cars on there, and now those cars can't go anywhere else on the line. It just I'm not. I guess I'm not understanding like the, the thinking that went into that. It seems like kind of like a waste of money. That you knew the ridership was going down. You put newer cars on there that now can't be used anywhere else. Yeah, it I, just I, seems like kind of I can poor speak planning. to that. And just one more thing, because the last thing is that it's like that you're, you would be subsidizing if, if there was reduced fears on the the Metro Electric could be subsidized, the other areas would be subsidizing it. But it seems that 
we're almost in the position that we're subsidizing other neighborhoods now with, with, because of the poor planning that was done, or what seems to be planning, I should say. Sure. So regarding the cars, the, uh, the, the cars that were replaced were over 30 years old. They had already outlived their useful life. Uh, we were paying, uh, we we're paying outrageous prices because the components were no longer available. <coughs> that technology on the older Highliners are actually GE technology from 1925. So we had to do something. Uh, the Metro Electric District's not going away. So we did replace the fleet. It was a responsible thing to do. It's much cheaper to run today and maintain because things are now microprocessed and solid state components versus the relay technology they had back there. So those cars will hopefully be in service 40 years from now. So, but so for years though, that they had real out of date cars, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. And, and that may have contributed to the decline in the ridership, like. No, I, well, but when you look at when you when you look at the frequency of trains, so out of the 11 lines, you run 170 trains a day. Uh, the next busiest line, the line that moves more passengers than anyone else, is the BN. They have 94. So you can kind of see the Rock Island has 76. So while you have 70, why the Rock Island has 100, or 76, you have 170. Uh, even when we look at the proposal of what's going to be reduced, on a Saturday, the BN is going to have 28 trains that run on Saturday. You're going to have eight. So the frequency's there. The equipment's there. The equipment's brand new. Uh, it's true that you can't interchange them with the diesels. So we do have a diesel. We have other, all the other lines are diesel locomotives, there's 836 coaches, they're not interchangeable, but this district's going to be here forever, it's going to be running forever, those cars are going to be reliable and running for the next 40 years. But you said that you didn't see a link between the declining ridership no, and because, because the if, if, I, 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 know you, categorically? I spoke to you and you uh, had an opportunity to do a little uh, research online. If you go online. Yeah, just a cursory Google search today. Sure. If, if you go online, or we'll be happy to share with you, one thing about Metro Electric is month after month, it consistently has the best time performance out of our entire system. So I'm saying that whether. Even with the outdated Even equipment. with the old cars, yes. That our mechanics are so good, they were able to keep those cars running reliably to where you're averaging between 96 and 98 percent. There's so a lot of there lines that can't make 95. Is the ridership declined so much just on this line? Can I explain why? Or has there been any research? It does seem like odd that it's declined so much. Uh, no, well, I, I'll just say again, the, the reason seems pretty obvious. Uh, the service is not adequate. Again, you've got identical endpoint. You, have, you start from Blue Island. One line ends up at LaSalle Street. One end ends up at Millennium Park. The Millennium Park line serves way more many des destinations. <coughs> the ridership is way down. And the service, the schedules are not adequate. And that is why people don't ride it. It's yes. really pretty obvious. And I, I'm not asking you to wave a magic wand and solve it all here, but to me, that seems like the obvious it, it, problem. It's the chicken and the egg. You say if we put more trains on, the ridership will go up. We're saying that due to the ridership, there's no, no. warranty to put right. I, I think no you're looking at the wrong end of the telescope. <laughs> right. yeah. What is the reason for us not having the express trains in the morning when we have to get up and go to work? We cannot transfer to an express train in the morning. We, we can look at the specific trains you're speaking of because we do have a few. No, you only have one, and that's like 640. Yeah, so, sure, sure. And, and then again, we were looking at reconfiguring the, the morning rush. The morning rush, by and large, is not touched, but there are a few cases. But that no, the ones in the evening sure, sure, sure. is not touched. It's just the ones in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, so if you have specific times, please write those down so we can look at that. This whole exercise, this whole proposal, was looking at how we can reconfigure, reconfigure our trains and the stop times, right, to make what you hope to be more efficient service. No. Uh -uh. Now, this is a case where, no, as you mentioned. No, um, you got the 702, um, mm -hmm. and you got the 720. Uh-uh. Sure, and the, again, we were. Um, no express trains. <laughs> that means we have to catch a local train. That's mean it's going to take us, like I have to be at work at 8. 
I won't be able to take the 720. I have to catch the 640 in order to transfer. And, that, and that's the kind of that's feedback wrong. we're looking for. That's the kind of feedback we're looking for. In doing this, we were trying to make the best use of our equipment. Some of those trains in the Blue Island, just to be frank, had lower ridership. So yeah, but not the lower ridership. ridership. And second, please, one, the way you get higher ridership sometimes is making more stops to get more passengers at other, other stations. So if there's a case still hover where it does interfere with your start time, that's the type of stuff we're looking at. How we can tweak, you know, here and there. If there's some of the train that you think needs to get before eight, please write that down. We will look at that. And if there's a possibility, we'll, we'll do that. Or maybe we make some of those further stops, flag stops, whatever it may be, we'll take a deep look at that. Yeah, but y'all making it convenient for people in a half park. Get a chest like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's wrong. Because we paying the most money. Y'all didn't say nothing when y'all went up 33%, and then y'all just went up again. Yeah, think that's that wrong. Right. So why is we paying our money? Yeah, and having the yeah, uh, services cut. cut. I don't think that's right either. Mm -hmm. Raising the prices for the tickets, then having the service cuts. That's wrong. What is the difference between operating a, I realize it's kind of hard to take down, but what's the difference between operating a Rock Island train, a diesel train, and running an electric train? Is there much cost difference between operating one train versus the other? No, no not really. When you look at the grand scope of it, you got the electric power for the, you know, the train with versus diesel electricity, uh, but then you also have the maintenance of another complete railroad, which is your cantonary system. So as you look at it, it really isn't a, a huge difference in it. But the big advantage which drives up that on-time performance is on the Rock Island, if that locomotive has a mechanical problem, the train dies in route and go nowhere. On the Metro Electric, whether it's a four or six or a seven car train, one of the cars can become defective and the other five will just push it along. So you're, there's a big advantage to being a customer on the electric because the uh, probability of having a mechanical breakdown that delays you is much less. I want to mention too, where there's been times where the uh, 439 has left Blue Island going to Kensington and they just turn around and come on back because uh, of track trouble or stuff on the tracks. You are correct. Sure. And we have to make those decisions in the spur of the moment. Sometimes if we can't get through, we have to move the equipment off the, the rails and completely disrupt everybody's um, trip that day. We try to minimize impacts during any operational problem. And it, it's, unfortunately, sometimes you just have to move equipment out of the way so we can continue running. Yeah. Sorry, I came in late, but um, did you talk about the Saturday service? being cut completely? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. He <laughs> <You> represented <laughs> you well. Uh, I was, I mean, my suggestion was, can you compromise and go to every two hours like they do on Sundays? Because I take the Sunday train out of Homewood because there is no Sunday service out of Blue Island. So I have to take it sometime. But you know, every two hours would be better than nothing. Uh, I, I highly suggest that you definitely write in saying what trains you do take reasons why you, you take those trains. We're here to gather information um, in order to, to keep moving forward with this. So we've, we've talked a little bit about this. We've talked about compromises with that. But what we need is specific information. Email. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah very one of the schedules is right here. There's also a handwritten that, that we are collecting. Can I help Bill? You answer my question. And I may have just been stuck. Did you say why um, you think the ridership is declining so much just on for us? You're asking me? Yeah. There, there, we, we can't answer that question. I know this gentleman here you know, said yeah, it is yeah. because of the poor train service and things like that, where the train service here in, is much better than a lot of places that we have train service. So I don't know what that is. Maybe it's the amount of housing, maybe it's the amount of business, maybe it's the, I, I can't answer that question. All I can tell you is, as we look at the ridership, and we try, again, we started with a clean piece of paper because these schedules have been around for 30 years, maybe tweaked a little bit, but it's been the same schedule forever. And the ridership on the electric has continued to decline, except for one area, and I think we all know the area was, is the Hyde Park area where there's a lot of, you know, booming things going on right now. I have a feeling the South Chicago branch at some point in time in the very near future will blossom like you haven't seen it. 
this area, I was talking to the mayor with all of the hopes and dreams and things that are going on out here, connecting things up. That's going to happen here too. It's when it does, then we're going to be able to put train service and, and add it and have a more robust system. So, but to answer why why you take the train that you do or why you take the train that you do, it, I assume it's for work. I assume it's the most convenient way. I assume you're happy with the service. But if you didn't take the train, I wouldn't know why you didn't personally take the train. So I can't tell you why the ridership is is down. I mean, we could ask 100 people and you'll have 100 different answers. So, but the fact is that we're dealing with the data and the data is that its ridership is down. But doesn't the data, I mean, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but I will for a minute. Doesn't the data suggest that the Rock Island service from Blue Island, where you can get downtown in as little as 20 minutes, and the IC service from Blue Island, where it's like 45 minutes to an hour, doesn't that suggest that there's a real differential in the services well, that you, would defeat the You keep on service? suggesting that, like it should be obvious to us, but really when you think about it, when you get on the train at Blue Island, on the Rock Island, on the main line, right, on the main line, then you have a pretty much an express service going down right. unless you're stopping at 103rd, you're stopping at, at 95th Street, you're stopping at 87th Street. And it's a great service. And, but what I'm saying is, the people on that train have already stopped. They left Joliet, they stopped at New Lenox, they stopped at Hickory Creek, they stopped at Mokina, they stopped at Edith Avenue, they stopped at Oak Park, they stopped at Oak Forest, they stopped at Robbins. So they've, they've endured that ride already, where if you get on at Blue Island, on a mainline Rock Island train, you're on a rocket. Right. So, you know, you gotta look at it. You got, if you're gonna compare it, compare it to the Beverly branch, where we're stopping every right. four blocks. And look at the time on the Beverly Branch. Then you would have. Then you, then you would truly be comparing. Well, I mean, the conclusion I would draw is run express trains from Blue Island on the electric line, and bam, <laughs> you're going to do really well. And I know I understand this pie in the sky, blah blah, but it does seem like there is a conclusion that you could reach from all this. I, mean, well, I, it I, does. I appreciate yeah. it, and, and write down your concerns. But if you're really looking at it, if you're going to draw comparisons, you got to really draw comparisons with apples to apples and, and, and things like that. So I can appreciate what you're saying. And the whole reason we're out here, once again, we want to hear, we want to hear concerns. And if we can tweak things up and make things better, can we leave it the way that it is? No, I'm going to be honest with you. There's, I'm not going to leave here and tell you something that's not true. It isn't working the way that it is. But if we can make it better and tweak things up, that's what we want to do. We want to hear and, and try to make things better. Well, and again, thank you for coming out. With well, thank you. Very much appreciate it. This is, this is important. This is important outreach. It really is. When do, when do this goes in effect? We don't have a certain date. What we're, the goal we're shooting for, I'll, be, I'll give you that, we're shooting for a goal of around, was it mid-September? Yeah, correct. Somewhere around mid-September. Because it takes a lot, believe it or not, it's not just we come out and do meetings and put a schedule in place. There's crews, there's hours of service, there's a lot of things that have to happen to make it happen. There's schedules that have to be drawn up there. There's just so many things. Then there's the outreach of the final product so everybody understands the nerve changes. Yeah, I worked down at uh, worked down at Navy Pier and you're on Saturdays, if you cut that train, I can't get to work. My wife works north of of Millennium Park, and uh, it's no way we'll be able to get to work if we have to walk from LaSalle Street Station. I know you run 11 trains on a Saturday. Can't you cut it down to two or three in the morning, two or three in the afternoon? That would at least alleviate the people who have to work on Saturdays. And as far as so many, as the one gentleman said, there's a lot of things going on downtown that the IC lane goes by. Why can't you do a little advertising? You have all the other things in your in your trains. Why not advertise? Hey. There's a festival here, our train goes by there. There's the museum campus, our train goes by there. If you advertise a little bit, you're going to get more ridership. Raising the price, cutting the trains <clears throat> is not going to help. Thank you. Yeah. Advertising would help, like advertising locally in Blue Island. When you want to come up and talk about some of the advertising that we have done, specifically for this line of what we what we have done. Hi, I'm Wendy Abrams, External Affairs in Metro, and uh, um, actually, this is my third meeting, and I've had this question asked all three times, so I'm happy to answer. Um, I think that. We have just hired a new advertising agency. I think the board and our leadership sort of recognize that we need to change things up a little bit. So we have been, they have been on board with us for about the past year, right? And we've done a lot of market research. We just launched our first new advertising campaign last week. 
Um, right now, it's kind of more of an umbrella campaign aimed at promoting Metra overall. It's not line specific. But um, I think that when the changes are rolled out mid-September, we recognize that we have quite a bit of work to do to make sure that people understand what the schedule is and how it's going to change and try to get more people on board our trains. Um, so that's sort of the plan right now. But to, to your point, sir, um, we actually, I think, do a pretty good job of promoting events through social media and earned media. Um, but, but look to see some more paid media for those kinds of things to help us build our ridership in the, in the next in the years to come. Because we recognize that we have more we can, we can be doing. Right. But you have some older people that is not on social media. Right. So you still need to reach them also. I could not agree with you more. And we definitely recognize we do billboards, we do radio, we do social media, we do earned media, basically newspapers, we place ads in print media. Um, so I think I think that we have a pretty robust program now, and I think that we're going to be doing a lot more, but I, I absolutely agree that we need to be more line specific, because I think that's really important. Well, what about working like, with Blue Island? I mean, the hospital over there, I mean, the older citizens go in there, put advertisements in there, if the mayor can work that out the you got a form newspaper representative here, the local newspaper right behind you. Exactly. I mean, I mean, advertising, and if you advertise in New Island and the surrounding communities that, you know, all these things are going on in Chicago, right. you can, you know, get the train in Blue Island. Why not come down on the weekend? Then you wouldn't have to be cutting all this, but give it a try before you cut it. Right, right. And I'll throw this as a, a plug to Blue Island. For example, Maple Tree Inn voted 15th in the Chicago metro area as a restaurant. That's a plus for Calisad Trail. All the restaurants up and down Old Western Avenue and up and down the Blue Island Business District, the parks, the people, the hospital, everything, all of that should oh, also be included. Right, it could be like people from the city down Come in the Blue Island. Come this way, the brewery. Mm -hmm. And the hospital over there. There's Correct. people that are going to need to use the hospital too. I mean, it's got the best cardiovascular that I've ever been with. So, I mean, things can be done. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was glad to hear that you, you made sort of your pitch for like every, all the great things that are going on in your community. Because definitely I think we're going to be doing more and more of that sort of, it's more of a partnership. The really. slogan that uh, Jason Berry came up with, think outside the loop. <laughs> so that's what it is. Let's think outside the loop, not always focus that way, let's come this way, some. Yeah. Market research, and you know, as this gentleman said, that yeah. there's been no research done on like why the decline. Maybe that could be part of the reason, you know. Oh, we're just before you make a, an absolute cut, which is drastic, mm -hmm. you got market research that could find out a little, you know, why is it happening before you could that maybe you could do smaller steps if you knew why it was happening. And, and if you know, you're hiring someone to do market research. You know, why not utilize it? And, and to look at some of the demographics that are being affected by it. No, I think that's a good point. I think we probably have a pretty good sense of the, the demographics, but um, there's definitely more that we can learn. There's no doubt. And yeah, listen to this. We have a lot of millennials, Generation X. They have to be informed that that line exists. A lot of us old timers know that the IC, the Metro Line Electric has been there. A lot of them don't know that it exists. They have only know about the Rock Island line. Let's know about the other line. Right. Amen. And we have an answer of why we've been finding simple market research right there. Yeah, just okay. to reiterate about the Saturday service, please consider reducing instead of eliminating. Um, because I think once it goes away, we don't even know why it's happening. Once it goes away, it's going to be very difficult to reinstate that. Um, you talk about. South Chicago developments and all that, maybe putting a line in there, that's great. You can see that development. I feel like a city like Blue Island, you have a very established community, but it also tends to be an older community. So how do you assess new families coming in, new generations building up this place when you're not going to see the buildings come up when it's simply more of a change of ownership? So how do you know that you need that Saturday service if you completely take it away? Well, that's where we'll be working with the community. Um, when, when the community, when the development comes and more people, you know, move into the community and things happen, we will we will definitely look at bringing train service, the additional service out here. As we do, not just in Blue Island or not just on the electric district, we're looking at the whole system. This is being done holistically throughout the system. What, where we think we need to um, 
you know, more <coughs> service, better put resources and things. That's what we need to do. It doesn't work just to sit here, and, and that's partially our fault. We probably should have made some of these decisions several years ago, but the hope was things would come back and things would sustain themselves, things would be better, and, and things like that. And it's not showing that right now, and that's, that's the issue that we have. But the good thing is, we're not taking up the track, we're not moving the station, we're not doing any of that, so if we need to add additional service, we can do that pretty quickly. So you're saying that, like, to take away something, you just look at kind of the numbers that, you know, you know, some of the research or the, the development, you just look at the data. But when you're talking about adding it back, you don't look at the data, you look at, you know, the things that are coming. I mean, you, you well, make absolutely. The, the we look at data, we get data in many forms. As we look at communities and our planning department analyzes where growth areas are, what developments are going on out there, we look at those communities. We keep track of what's going on, TODs, which are trans, uh, transit orientated development type things where people are big the, building larger complexes close to the rail stations, big apartment buildings, things like that. You look at those and you start to look before, because you don't want to start looking at it after everything's built and nobody can get on the train. You look at as things are developing and you plan for that. So that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to move the service and where it needs and provide the best service we can for what we have. And then also, as things grow, five years from now, we might be in a complete different situation. We may be. I can't tell you that. But as things change, we need to be more nimble in making those changes because with the scarce dollars and funding that we have, we've got to be able to sustain the system. We just have to do it. It's, it's, it's nothing more than that. We've got to be able to put resources and trains where the needs are for those trains, for the people that are using the trains. It doesn't, we can't sustain a system running a train with one person, two people, three people, when when it's very costly to do that. The, the rail service evidently isn't the service for it to try to, to handle that. Maybe a bus, maybe something else would be better. I'm not an advocate for moving anything off of the train. But, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry? I said that's more money. What, what I, what, all I'm saying is it costs a lot of money to provide rail service and sustain it. And, and what we want to do is make sure we can continue to sustain it. We don't want to let it get so bad where we have to make some drastic decisions. That's the problem. Most of the time people don't do things until it's way too late, and then they've got to make choices that are much tougher than if they'd have made them incrementally along the way. So we could do like a lot of people do, hide your head in the sand, think it's going to go away and the problem's going to get better, and in fact it's going to get worse, and then come back and say, uh, the service cuts that we were talking about before are nothing close to what we may need to do in the future. We don't want to do that. We want to identify, we want to provide the service, we want to work with the communities, we want to hear from, from everybody. That's what we're trying to do. We're no different than you run your household. You've got X amount of money to run the household, and you try to live within your means to run the household for whatever money you have coming in. That's all we're trying to do, and build service, build build ridership. That's what we're trying to do. So we want to work with you. That's what you're saying. You're saying compromise, yet you're cutting out the whole center. No, we can't. What no, kind of compromise is that? Well, you know, I, I don't. I really don't want to get into a discussion like that because we okay. could have cut the whole service. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to make. Do what makes sense. Please understand, this isn't easy for us to come out here and, and say that, but it would be a lot tougher to come out in two or three years from now and say, look, at the, the minor changes we're making here, there are going to be major changes. We don't want to be in that position. You don't want to be in that position. We don't want to be in that position. But if you don't look at the why it's happening, and then she said you don't. We've, we've discussed this already. I understand what you're saying. Put that down on your comment. And I mean, we can talk all night about the why, the why, and I understand it. You, you've said that, we've recorded it, please record it on your sheet, and then we can we can try to figure out the best way to move the trains and what we need to do. I think the person in the back may have a new, new question that we haven't heard before. With all the cuts you're making, it doesn't make this train a very appealable uh, train to want to ride anymore. All of the train, inbound trains are local trains. How is that appealing to uh, your commuters? I'm guessing. Um, <laughs> that we specifically need your train number 
um, that, that you read in the morning, and that's part of the comment. We've, we've had that question before. Sorry you weren't, weren't here. We have had some new people filter in um, through this discussion. Um, we moved to train 106 earlier to cover a service gap to try to drive ridership. That train was extremely low. Uh, we moved it forward, and therefore, in order to accommodate the passengers that train used to make, we put it on, on Blue Island trains. We are going back, and we're looking first thing Monday on, on if that makes 100% sense, if we can start pushing the, the stops maybe on different trains around the line uh, to see if we can accommodate that. So please, though, I need specifically what train you ride today and and any train you take. The thing is, on. I'm not consistent with the exact same train every day of the week. That, that's fine. I we, mean, we I ride all different trains, and I kind of expect my, it's more important for me to get into work on time and have an express train going in work on time than coming home on time. And looking at your schedule, you had all local trains going inbound, and you weren't even giving the option to switch at 115 to jump onto an express train. That's exactly what and this point And you're making it very unappealing to even want to take the train. Sure. And, and so I don't know how you're going to be able to build up ridership with all of the changes you're talking about here. And that's the information that we're here to gather. Uh, specifically the trains that you take even if it's three four five six I need to know those trains times you go to work that helps as well um, before everybody got here we were talking about um, the two trains in the morning right the ones that you transfer over at Kensington to get in um, very very low ridership and for years we've been hearing that that transfer is just not something that people want to do they don't want to stand out in the cold they don't want to stand out when it's hot it's too dark it doesn't feel safe so what we did is we combined the first two trains in the morning to try to get it down around six o'clock. Through conversations, not only here, but in other locations that we've done this week, we understand that the 557 arrival is just not gonna work. So we're probably gonna have to push it back a little bit in order for people to make that six o'clock start. Those are the comments that we're gathering. Those are the ones that we can take back and look at the schedule that we're proposing and see if we can make those changes. I thought it was kind of odd to see some of those trains going homebound in the evening and all the stops that were going to uh, uh, 56, 57, 58, 59, all of those. And I'm seeing um, stops going there every two, three minutes and within a five minute period. But yeah, we've got to take this 60 minute train ride and we live approximately a half hour outside of the city. You're gonna lose people this way. And, and those, those are the comments we're taking back. I promised her I'd look at it Monday morning Probably doesn't look like 15, 16 times I promised her that's going to look. I know. No. Lady in the back, you've had your hand up a long time. Yes. Okay. That's you. Um, so as it stands right now, in the come September, there will be no service on Saturday? Is that what I'm understanding? That's what the proposal is. Okay. And the blue shirt? I would have to agree with a previous commenter that there would be a much better way to solve the um, solve the low ridership issues in the uh, Saturday trains. Um, many of the early trains, they have very many people on them going inbound. Um, and it would be better to focus on the trains that have low, low ridership and just cut those out and leave the higher ridership ones going in, then cut the entire service. And that's, that's some of the feedback that we're getting. Please, the trains that you ride, comment them on them so that we can take another look at this one. Lady all the way in the back corner. Okay, I got a question and I'm looking at your, when you're proposing the morning train, you're cutting out, the last train is gonna leave from the sub line is at eight o'clock and the next one is not until 10, 10 o'clock on the sub line. Now what, what, what do you propose about the kids? You got kids who have some jobs in the summertime that depend on that nine o'clock train that's coming through there. So to we, take them the 55th and around the rest of the way. <clears throat> so, I mean, we already have where we're not getting on a train versus the Rock Island every hour. So we have to wait in the evening going home. You got a one o'clock train and then you got a three o'clock train. If, if you get off early, you, you got to make sure that you leaving right before one o'clock or at three o'clock. <clears throat> Nothing can happen to you in between that time. I mean, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's just a little frustrating. I can understand if you're going to do it every hour, but I mean, two hours is a long time to wait, especially if you just miss a one o'clock train. 
You gotta sit there till three o'clock. Yes, sir. I was surprised to hear the young lady say that you guys hired a firm in the past to market and promote. Yep. I'm also aware, by word of mouth, not firsthand, mm -hmm. that you do safety promotions up north and go to schools, marketing safety, um, other other facets. I'm not aware of anything in the south side. Safety-wise, promoting, like, like the mayor said, a few other people from there coming south or going north, going, you know, uh, south going north. If you're promoting the north and going to schools for safety and never hit the south suburbs for promoting safety, and we've had issues at 127th, that's a different rail, I understand, but just safety in general. You could have promoted using the rails more. Promoting, again, I think is a big issue here. If you just said that you hired somebody now, six months ago or whatever, a year ago, yep. had those people have research and data bring to you guys that you, whatever information you already have and work together, that would be more of a valid way of substantiating stuff. But because it really irritates me to hear that you're promoting the north, but you don't come to the south side schools. Amen. Promoting the same. Let, let me, before I'm sure you have an answer. I'm sure you have an answer. But let, let, let's just be realistic. And I'm just going to be blunt, not politically correct. And I've only ridden that train once. But that goes through a, some areas that are not too appealing. Okay? So let's address the reality of it. You have to promote, you have to educate, you have to do things first before you start saying, I'm gonna reduce. Like I said earlier, municipalities, everyone has to, under financial restrictions, we have, we have to work in a business sense and work with a budget and things are getting down, money comes to us from the state and everything else, we have restrictions. We have restrictions serving our constituents, you have restrictions serving your constituents. We all have to try to maintain service at the highest quality and the best quality. Rather than cutting, it's the easiest thing to do is to cut services. But then the taxpayers are gonna say, I'm paying for services. So let's talk realistically. That line has never been promoted. There's a lot of things that haven't been promoted on the south side. And we're just starting to do it in the city of Guam. In the past three and a half years, this administration has done a lot of good things for Guam in the south suburbs. But like I said, I, I guess one of you guys, we had a call to have a, what do you call, lazy on, lazy on person from Metro to come to look at our, our Metro stations because they weren't being maintained. Again, this location in Hawaii has been here for a hundred years. Before Tinley, before Beverly, before all these places. So we get the kids, because our, our historical site I've been asking what's been going on with that historical site for years. Well, we're gonna do some remodeling, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And then they, when they built the, the tower, they built that tower blocking it. How offensive was that to us without even considering Blue Island when they did that? That goes back in the 60s or 50s. So there's some things that are not communicated easily. It, was, it should have been brought, if ridership, uh, ridership was down, what have you guys done to promote the South Side? Yeah. And can I yeah. and again? Look, are, you, are, you are, you are you finished? I didn't want to sure. interrupt you. Let, let me just say this. When you talk about we're doing safety programs on the North Side, we're doing this on the North Side, we're doing that. We're doing safety programs all over. On the South Side, on the North Side, on the West Side, where, where we have our service area. We had our first ever televised safety nationally televised safety thing at the high school in, in I think it was Timothy Park, Park a couple Where? years ago a couple years ago. Where? Where at the Timothy Park High School. Oh Timothy Park High Okay, but it's the South Side. Is it the South Side just isn't Blue Island. Please understand that. The, the South Side is, is all the communities around the South Side. I am a South Side. Okay? I was born in Blue Island. So I so I understand. I understand that. So the bottom line that it is we're not turning our nose or turning our away from the south side. I told you about the investment we made. We made the investment of $585 million worth of new cars. We've got the best on-time performance, the more, most trains of any line. So 
to sit there and say, in all honesty, that we're not really paying attention to the south side isn't isn't really the, the correct statement. Now, can we work together and try to increase ridership? Can we do those things? Can we work collaboratively? The answer to that is yes, and we would like to do it. You talked about the, the, the tower that was built back in the 50s. Metra is only 33 years old, all right? We had nothing to do with the tower being built there. That was the Rock Island. My grandfather had 50 years on the Rock Island. My dad had 47. I've got coming up on 44. I started on the Rock Island. So I'm tied into this community, believe yes. it or not. So what we're, I'm saying here, I'm just not saying something and driving away. We're really trying to find out what's going on. But I don't want to dismiss the investment that we've made. And, and you start looking at the north side and you start looking at the west side. They've got cars that are, that are 64, 65 years old. We've got cars that just came off of the, the, the rebuild line, the manufacturing line last year. So, I mean, really, we've made significant investments, and I think that should also be done. Now, I understand what we're talking about is, is tough, it's, it's rough, and we are trying to work through some situations. All we're asking to do is, this is the proposal, tell us what it means to you and how it's going to affect your life, and then we'll try to do whatever we can to make that as minimal as possible. That's all we're asking to do. And as far as the marketing, it wasn't marketing for Blue Island, it wasn't marketing for the North Side. When we started talking with our board and working through our board, we said, you know what, ridership is declining, we've got some situations going on here. What do we need to do? So we looked at doing a marketing campaign. It wasn't just about any certain area. It was how can we get more people out of their cars and get them on the trains so we can sustain our system. That's what that is doing. So we're trying to look at it and say, why are people driving? You gotta be, well, I don't want to say this, but it's much nicer on the train than it is sitting for an hour in traffic every five seconds the guy slamming on his brake. Would you agree that people that ride the train? It's much nicer to do that. You can have a cup of coffee, you can read the paper. Why are so many people driving? We'll try to figure out how we can reach those people, whether they're in Blue Island, whether they're in Highland Park, whether they're in Joliet, Tilly Park. I don't care where they're at. We need to get more people on the trains. That's what we need to do. Collaboratively, let's work together and try to figure that out. I agree with 100%. Okay. My issue was the oh, I, marketing. You know, I, I think I misspoke because I said that um, we just hired an agency a year ago. We've always had an advertising agency. Metro has always done an advertising agency over the life of our, for 30 some years. But um, last year we hired a new advertising agency and I think that's, that's what was lost in what I said because I think the board and again Don and our leadership recognize that we need to be doing more. What we've been doing isn't enough. So they really wanted us to go in a new direction, a different direction, so we have a new agency that's really working with us. Their sole focus is increasing uh, uh, ridership, which is what they should do. So. Does it, anyone have any new feedback? Anything that we haven't already discussed? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just came late. Um, my name is Mary Cho, and actually I was born and raised at Stuart Rich all my life. So I've seen it from the IC, to the Highlander, to the whole nine yards. You asked about, does it upset my schedule? Definitely. I would take the train daily. I would take the night, evening trains home. I'm on it all the time because I don't drive downtown to park. Reason why I take it mainly is because it's for safety. It's for safety and sustainability. Those were the big things. But also, I'm a homeowner. And because in the West Pullman and in Stewart Ridge, and you're going through the 34th Ward, it's already been depleted, it's deprived, because West Pullman School is closed, and people are trying to build it up. And it's very difficult. If your train cuts these services, it's going to decrease our property values and our homes. And nobody would want to live there, because there's no way to get into the city unless you go walk up to 119th and take a Chicago bus and go through the red line and everything else. And then you got safety issues. Um, I agree about the marketing, what you've done, because over the, all the years it is interesting. I have some ideas for you to promote. Um, I always thought that if there's ways that you can promote creating, like in Pullman, because I'm active in the Pullman area as well, but if you can create having the bus stops right at these stations, primarily like Ashland, or even West Pullman, but Ashland, because you can then take, have them take a shuttle bus or have it on the bus route to go to the Croc Community Center. The Croc is a real lively community center nearby. 
It's something you can link up. You can also promote right at the Croc Center of taking the train. Um, the second one is the Marshfield Plaza. You have Target, you have West Pullman. You're getting people from the Pullman area who do, all they have is Walmart over there, but they can at least get on the train and go if they know if they can get connections to the Marshfield Plaza. Then there's also at West Pullman Library, I've noticed they have museum passes uh, for kids. This is offered by the Chicago Public Library, and I thought what a great way for you to link up the passes with the weekend pass because families do not have the money to pay for to go downtown with the Chicago events. I see that for myself, again, it does upset my schedule, and that's why I'm here. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so at, at this time, what we'd like to suggest, because we see a lot of new faces entering the room, is everybody's welcome to stay. We're here till 7. But for those that haven't seen the PowerPoint, we could, you know, you could move up front. Dan will run you through the PowerPoint, which is kind of the ABCs of how we've gotten to where we have, and then we'll take your questions since you weren't here for the majority of the last hour. 